right? Whoever designed the ragdolls in this game is my own personal hero. Well, it is once again that time of year. A new Battlefield 2042 patch has dropped, a new season has begun, a new map is out, there are a bunch of changes being made to the game, and I am far behind the curve. I was just giving Battlefield 2042 a hard time a few weeks ago, as it had hit a pretty low player count of about 3,700 or so on Steam. But after Season 3 is launched here, it's holding at a pretty steady 9 to 10,000. And I don't think it's just the new map and the handful of new weapons and vehicles that has players coming back. This is finally going to be the season where the class system is being reintroduced to the game. And as I hopped in to kind of refresh my memory about what this game has been up to recently, it really felt like that people were more hopeful I was keeping an eye on the chat in the corner and where there's usually a non-stop stream of Battlefield 2042 jokes and some zingers going back and forth, there was actually just a lot of positivity there in the chat and that is something that I have not seen in this game since probably launch week 2021. This video is brought to you by sponsor and longtime channel partner Apex Gaming PCs. Apex is having a massive Black Friday sale on all of their pre-built PCs. If you use code RANGERDAVE on a new build from Apex, including any of those pre-configured builds I have there on my page, or any additional customization that you might add on top, you will get 15% off of your total with that code RANGERDAVE. Make sure you guys check that sale out at the link down below at the top of the description. And remember, that 15% discount only lasts through November 30th. So if you're like me and you've fallen behind on what Battlefield 2042 and DICE have been up to these days, come along with me as I have played quite a few hours of the new patch and we're going to see how this game is doing these days. First, a couple of things to point out. Not all of the content is live here on Season 3's launch day. We do have the completely new map, Spearhead. We have the new Specialist. We also have all three new weapons available to unlock via the battle pass, not available just by default. New vehicles in, a new throwable throwing knife, along of course with what you would usually expect out of a live service game with a battle pass, a bajillion additional cosmetics available there in the in-game store. But what is not live just yet at the start of season three here includes the return of the class system as well as the two very anticipated map reworks for Manifest and Breakaway. It looks like DICE is saving those two big bullet point features for a mid-season update that's not quite going to be in the middle, thankfully. We should see those things going live around mid-December, it looks like. While this won't be the biggest patch that this game has had in one go, this is probably one of the most far-reaching seasons that Battlefield 2042 is going to have. This is the make or break season. The game has come a long way. I have to say, jumping in and getting extremely high frame rates, a complete lack of micro stuttering, having the mouse and keyboard controls feel far, far more responsive than they ever had. All of those things are great. Let's talk for just a few minutes though about what is actually already live and available to play for everybody here at the start of the season. 
first off, the new map, Spearhead. I'm going to go ahead and just concur with everybody who got to play this map early. It is by far the best looking map visually in the game. It really feels like DICE's map team has finally hit their stride on the amount of detail that they can pack into these maps. Besides the very striking, realistic looking terrain and river, the interiors of these weapons factories are fully animated. And not just a couple of doors and control panels, these factories are in operation with tons of machinery and moving parts and drones and robot arms. They are honestly just a visual delight to run through. Very distracting for close quarters combat, but I guess that is also the point from a map design perspective. But I walked away impressed with how much was going on with these interiors. This is probably balanced out by the fact that we really just have some surface destruction on these maps. The individual bases, the small military bases around the factory complex are pretty small, made up of mostly standalone props like concrete barricades and barrels and those little metal military huts. There's just not a lot of overhead for destruction on this map, although it is pretty cool that you can destroy the outside of the large factories the outside facade of their outer surface at least, that does look pretty cool, just from what I can tell, no big effect on gameplay. I actually haven't seen anybody get a debris falling kill, so I don't think we're going to see a Battlefield 3 level of tactics where you're constantly trying to drop wall pieces onto the soldiers down there just below the side of the building. I miss that though. I wish that we would see that Battlefield 3 level of harassing your enemies with debris kills. I really, really miss that. Now, the description for the map described it as a close quarters combat map, which I found kind of funny because if you're on foot, the map is actually quite expansive. Yes, the overall layout is in a mostly linear line east to west, but the open part of the terrain is truly open with tons of little pathways and roads to flank with and to have some really awesome cross river battles just back and forth there in the open. I had quite a few of those actually, the back and forth battles across not only the river crossing points, but just from opposing hillside to opposing hillside. So some really, really well thought out placement of the control points and the overall map for infantry. All of my infantry fights in Breakthrough and Conquest Honestly, we're tons of fun. It flows really, really well as infantry. If you're in a vehicle, the kind of cramped nature of this mostly linear conquest map does shine through. Yes, there are a ton of vertical options for hiding your vehicle, but unless you get backburned by a team running around in a Jeep capturing behind you, most of your vehicle gameplay is going to be facing in just one direction for the entire match, just because you really don't have a ton ton of room for flanking because of those map borders on the north and south being so tight. Again, as infantry, I really didn't notice those map borders being too restrictive, but in vehicles, uh, multiple times, it felt like I couldn't maneuver how I wanted to to engage another enemy tank. You know, there was no way that I could peek it or rotate around it without getting spotted first. There just weren't a lot of options for the vehicles besides that head to head action. But if you had a fast vehicle, you could definitely make use of the very vertical terrain to make a quick scoot behind enemy lines, drop off some troops, and do a lot of damage. So on this map, heavy tanks less useful, the lighter attack vehicles actually kind of shine on this one. With the new specialist, we got a very, very unique gadget. He has a ranged grenade launcher that allows you to force infantry out of cover or get a cheeky kill if you damage them and they're ducking back to heal. This thing is next to useless when hip firing or trying to get quick shots at enemies that just popped up because you really have to use the scope to range find for it to be most effective and for the air burst to, as you would expect, air burst correctly. I had not yet unlocked the new tank, but it is a really cool concept, a siege tank that has to deploy for better range and accuracy. A very unique concept and a very Battlefield 2142 looking vehicle, so thumbs up from me on that one. I also can't speak much to the throwing knives, which replace your grenade, other than wondering how terrible futuristic body armor must be to be instantly defeated by a throwing knife versus a bullet. But hey, it's a video game, right? I did, however, get my hands on the Rorsch railgun, and like the heavy tank, 
This is a very unique addition to the game and some pretty impressive creativity for a game that uh, everyone said was going to get no post-launch content. This gun walks the line between being annoying to use and being just the right amount of satisfying when you pull off a kill to keep you coming back. The projectiles don't travel instantaneously. This isn't suddenly a hit scan weapon in Battlefield. There's some drop and some travel time, but these things do have a significantly faster muzzle speed and they do a pretty good amount of damage against vehicles too. I was able to chase away multiple planes and choppers who were coming in for attack runs by using this thing effectively. I have not gotten an air vehicle kill with it yet, but I think it's just a matter of time. Also, timing the charge up and projectile launch to nail a headshot with this thing is beyond satisfying. And on the slow fire mode, the 80 or so damage that it does on a body shot is still a solid hit. You're gonna get a lot of assists and you're occasionally gonna go down after awkwardly whiffing a shot, but again, the hits are satisfying enough to keep you coming back for a very unique addition here to the game. So another thumbs up for me. Oh, it also has a burst fire and a rapid fire mode, which as you would expect, sacrifices velocity and stopping power in favor of fire rate. Those modes were pretty fun too, but nothing beats that charge up mode. So there you have it, the start of Battlefield Season 3. A few months back, I wondered if Battlefield 2042 was starting to begin its comeback story. I'm still not sure if players are ever going to give it a chance again on a large scale, but it looks like quite a few players are tentatively taking a second look. It does make me wonder though, at what point has the game been reworked and redesigned so much that it truly is a completely separate title from what launched last year. It really does feel that different already. For now, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.